What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video we're going to talk about my technical interview with Google. If you guys are new to the channel, I help non-technical people get into coding and we talk about everything from tech, coding, entrepreneurship, startups, all that good stuff here on this channel. So if you guys are into that, make sure you like, share, subscribe. It really helps me stay motivated to keep making this content for you guys. And let's go ahead and jump right into this. So I just have a couple of like things I wanted to talk about as far as my experience interviewing for a developer role at Google. Basically, the way I got the Google technical interview was through my LinkedIn. So actually, I got contacted by a Google recruiter via LinkedIn. And I actually thought it was spam in the beginning because, I mean, if you guys are on LinkedIn, you know you get a whole bunch of like spammy messages from recruiters and you know, people trying to network and sell you stuff. I just randomly got the in the inbox, but the message itself made sense. It seemed very specific to me. And so um, I think I sent her an email or we followed up and I sent a resume or something like that. Then we did a phone interview, just her and I, which wasn't actually a part of the Google interview, but it went from the LinkedIn message to formal business email, from business email to phone call with the recruiter where she vetted me you know, way further. We had a great conversation. She gave me a lot of like interview prep resources. So she sent me an email that had a bunch of like files and, and like PDFs and like all these things that walked you through all the different types of questions you could get asked in the interview, all the different types of things you should be familiar with, the, the coding environment, things that could come up, things you should prepare for, get ready for, like every type of scenario that basically could happen in a Google interview. She sent those things over in a really well-crafted, pretty long email with a whole bunch of attachments. And I was really appreciative for that because it made me feel like as long as I put the time in to study these resources, these are coming directly from the Google recruiter. So these have to be the things that I need to know for the interview. So if I just literally put the time in to study these things as much as I possibly can between now and the interview, I felt really, really confident that going into it, I would do well. So we finish off the phone screening by her asking me, um, how long do I need to prep? Which is a funny question because if you guys have done any technical interviews before, you know that that's usually not a thing. Yeah. No one's going to really ask you when you will be ready to take your technical interview. So the one that showed me the type of prestige that Google holds in the industry, it was like, Hey, it's great that you have experience doing X, Y, Z, that you know this, this, and that, and that language, and blah, blah, these things. But I advise every candidate to take at least 30 days to prep over the material that I'm going to send you before they actually take the interview. Those are exactly the Google recruiter's advice to me. I think I did take her word on that. I took exactly 30 days, but... That was because I didn't want to wait too long and kind of get into like a analysis paralysis and just get too far into like studying too much stuff and kind of overthinking it and then just being too nervous to really do well on the actual interview. So I thought 30 days was a, a solid period of time to fill any gaps that I had with whatever I needed to study. And I felt like, you know, worst case scenario, I would just go into the interview with 30 days of nonstop prep under my belt. And I would just see how I compared to Google developers. I kind of knew I didn't really have a shot going into the interview, but because it came serendipitously through LinkedIn like that, I felt the need to just go ahead and try it out, guys. I mean, if she felt like my credentials on LinkedIn were good enough to talk to me, then I'll put myself out there and I'll, I'll take a shot at the interview. Why not? I can, you know, if worst case scenario, you'll at least know what the interview experience was like with Google and you'll know kind of, again, where you, where you kind of are in the totem pole. I study for this whole 30 days. Now, during this 30 day period of time, I started reading gronking coding algorithms and cracking the coding interview as well. And both of those books were extremely helpful in understanding data structures, but I will admit gronking the coding uh, algorithms or whatever the book, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the video, but that book was way more straightforward, easy to read and taught me a lot more meaningful stuff that I needed for the interview than cracking the coding interview. I know a lot of people are probably gonna rip me apart in the comment section for saying that. However, just hear me out. I think 
Cracking the Coding interview reads more like a college textbook. It is very dense and it is very wordy and very hard to read and very like technically written. And I mean, that's fine, right? We're talking about coding interviews and technical interviews and stuff. I understand that, but bronking the coding algorithm was much more digestible. It was much more layman's terms. Lots of great analogies for data structures and time complexities that really helped the concepts kind of stick in my head a little bit. And that is why I preferred studying with that book than cracking the coding interview. But understand that I do have both and I did use both for getting ready for the coding interview uh, with Google. And also, I spent a ton of time doing data structures and algorithms. So writing data structures from scratch and doing a bunch of coding algorithms every single day on edibit.com, leetcode.com, like any way I could get my hands on challenging coding algorithms. I timed myself. I did live coding algorithms with um, other developers that like friends that I have. I would just do video calls and share my screen and I would have them time me on solving a problem. And then we would talk about our code after we got done with the problem. We talk about how I could be more efficient, talk about the time complexity. So I was practicing all these things at the same time, writing data structures in my free time, understanding how they work. So those are all the things that I'm practicing for those 30 days going into the interview. That's my regiment going into the, the interview. So now fast forward to the interview day itself and I'm gonna talk about the actual interview experience. So when I get on the call, because he talked to me over the phone, um, I was I was emailed, I believe, a link to a Google Doc. The entire interview, I was expected to code inside of this blank Google Doc, which was very new. I had been practicing during the 30 days doing this on a whiteboard or just in a random text editor notepad or whatever, just basically practice coding in something that is not an IDE or a text editor because for some reason, Google asked me to code in just a Google Doc. And I guess not having IntelliSense and syntax highlighting can make it a little bit more difficult and it can really force you to display your mastery of a language and how well you understand things in the language and how it works. But it was either way, even after practicing, it's a little weird, but I didn't feel too rattled about it on the coding interview because again, I had been practicing for those 30 days doing that. The problem they gave me was actually not even like a algorithm like I expected. They asked me to write a data structure and they gave me very specific methods they wanted the data structure to do. And they wanted me to pseudo code it first and then write it out and talk through it obviously as I'm writing the data structure. I solved the problem and it was it was actually a really great interview experience. I've been struggling a lot with getting my thoughts out and communicating better while I was thinking through the problem or writing my pseudo code or actually like like coding. I wanted to get better at that. I knew I had to get better at communicating through my thinking, you know, as I'm coding. So I worked on that a lot and this guy, you know, was a really awesome interviewer because he gave me very specific and helpful hints only when I needed them. He always gave me that little extra push. He, he by talking out loud to the problem, he could understand where I was at and where I was trying to go. And then he could just nudge me a little bit in either direction that I needed to, to get close to the problem. So I'm not going to say I just sat down and zipped through it, but due to practicing my communication skills and, and having that good communication throughout the interview, he was able to kind of give me the necessary hints and nudges I needed throughout the problem to get me to actually solve it. But the point was, I think he knew I was capable of solving the problem. It's just that when you actually talk to them, they can understand if you just don't know what's going on or if you're just stuck and just need a little bit of help. However, guys, ultimately, I still did not get the job. Um, I believe that it was because even though I did write the data structure properly, I'm still not the best at time and space complexity and i think that they were probably looking for me to solve the problem in a much more efficient way and i probably exposed myself of not knowing or being on top of my space and time complexity as much as possible in the way that i wrote the data structure so it still worked i tested my code afterwards and made sure that it worked and he also approved it and told me that it was fine and he didn't need to see anything else so i knew that it was okay that it passed However, guys, again, you just never know. And this is why, you know, you never know what they're looking for when they're actually asking you to write these these things, this, this code, pseudo code, ask you to talk through it. You don't know all the different things that they're actually looking for in a candidate. And that's why you want to make sure you practice holistically on the communication, the pseudo code, the actual coding and talking through the code. And you want to just practice all those things because you never know 
which one they value more than the others or just what they're looking for specifically to make you stand out you know as the candidate to hire so that was my little technical interview experience with google guys my little story i hope you were able to learn something or take something away from that you guys let me know if you have any questions comments if you want to talk about some stuff about this story or whatever ask me questions down in the comment section below if you guys are like new to coding or thinking about going to a coding boot camp or anything like that make sure you guys check out the description section down below where i'm giving out my free intro to coding boot camp course where it's just packed with everything that i wish i knew before i went to coding boot camp so you guys can get a head start on that you can go check it out at daringthedev.thinkific.com completely free to enroll and also i got a whole bunch of more free research for you guys down in the description box. So make sure you guys check that out. If this was helpful, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. It really just helps me stay motivated to keep making this content for you guys. Again, this is Darian with Darian the Dev, and I'll see you guys in the next video, all right? Peace.